in that direction, you need to include the weight of the volume of water? Yes, you do, to be precise. But when you have done the homework, and I asked you that at the end of lecture last time, when you've done the homework, you look at the answer, and I'm jumping ahead to solve this problem, how much of the weight due to the water and how much of the weight due to the nozzle compared to the anchoring force needed? Can someone answer that for me? Almost zero. Almost zero. It's negligible. But until you do that, you don't know. And I want you to do it, to convince yourself, well, for some problem, they are negligible. Right? But not all. And you have to be careful. That's all? Right? Any more questions on this? So the last part, which is equally important to the weighting, is if I change the flow of this device, which is just a back box, right? In the part A, I show you that just a back box without telling you what is inside and how the flow being turned. And in part B, I ask you two flow paths. One is, one is this, one is this, for the internal geometry of this black box. And just to make it more interesting, crazy guy actually come up with this. Will the answer change? Why not? How do you know? For a steady problem, I don't care what is inside, because it's steady at the inlet and the exit, all I care is the interface, the control surfaces. Because that's all appear here. The content, how they change inside, is for a steady problem irrelevant. So the answer is it doesn't matter. Okay? And that's important because this is a very simple minded approach. I cover this up. And I don't care what happened internally. I just look at the surfaces for the control one. Okay, so I think I took a little bit more time just to set the stage for what is to come. So I want to open the floor for questions for today's homework, which you have to post. And have you looked at your grade yet on the homework? If you haven't logged into Congress, then you haven't. And you should check it in case if you turn the homework and you didn't get credit. And you should ask no. More the quiz. So, Four open for the home built today, yes? Um, do you have to account for the water just inside that cone, or do you, would you also try to account for the water that's like above it? Yeah, that's... Um, I just did the cone... For this problem, the answer is what is given in terms of the geometry, you would only account for the water in here, because that's the only water given. You, you don't have any other mean to include Otherwise, all right, so the answer is just the geometry that's given to you, which is just the cone, right? But again, is it important? Is it even, what, what's, how much the weight due to the water? And, and for those who have done the homework, the weight due to the water in pound force is 0 0.00 approximate 6. And the weight due to the nozzle is, in the problem statement, on two, whereas the answer due to the force to hold the nozzle <coughs> 15 pounds. So I don't even care about that on two of the weight of the nozzle. And this is a good way to express your answer in the test, right? Because it's kind of independent of the coordinate. You just tell me that this force, anchor force, is upward. So I encourage you to do that in the, in, in, the, in, the, in the exam so that we don't have to trace exactly what you have done. All right, any more questions on this? Yes? Right now our forces were along uh, one axis, but when we're going to have forces um, mm -hmm. with different components, should we express all of our forces with vector notation or...? So let's, let's deal with that when we go for the 2D plate problem. The answer is you don't have to use vector, but you just have to look at two equations, one in each direction, and they're perpendicular to each other. Vector is not very useful in solving problems. So it's not one equation, then you have two equations. Right? So just to make sure, on this problem, 
I want to ask you if I choose two different control arms, <coughs> rectangular or cylindrical, <coughs> cylindrical right angle control arm versus that following the shape of the nozzle, and I draw the pressure forces acting on them. draw them in all directions. So I have P atmospheric everywhere and P1 absolute on the top. Uh, you can draw this, right? And you follow me. And I do the same thing for this diagram. <coughs> P1 absolute. Now I have pressure normal and perpendicular. Normal and inward. On all surfaces. Where all this is P and square. Are they equivalent? Can you see they're the same? Everyone's on top of this? Because we're going to be using this later on in other homework. And I want to make sure you agree that this is equivalent. Yes? So, in the problem, it said that in section one, the pressure was. It just said I'm sorry, say that again. Pressure one. It said pressure one was just 68 psi. Yep. Um, is that if it doesn't clarify that it's gauge pressure, do we assume that's absolute pressure? That's a very good question. So let me repeat so all you can hear. And this, you can see that in the test, which you're given a pressure of 68 psi, nothing else. What is that pressure? Gauge. Gauge. Without calling it out, let me just say psi is gauge. Okay. If I call it out absolute, then you know it's absolute. It will be spelled out PSI A, 68. Without that, it's gauge. Always remember that. It's less clear for SI in kilopascal. Now you have on that pipe pole. And the problem has to be more clear. All right. But moving forward, PSI, without saying, Refer to PSIG. Okay, now you understand this. Other things that we may use in terms of the shape of the control volume will be if I happen to have a circular control volume and I have PA everywhere. such that if I make a cut in the center and look at forces in the x direction, what's the net pressure? What's the net pressure due to atmospheric acting on a sphere or a circle in the x direction? Zero. 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 To that effect, if the control volume, just for fun, is arbitrary shape 